really, he was six three, but he he was is short in the trunk, you know. God, he could play. And his last year, um, after every game, I'll tell you how much this guy was loved. After every game, because his knee was shot, and he would have to just walk around and practice. And after the game, he'd have to be packed in ice for two hours. So we'd go out and get a couple of cases of beer and bring him into War Memorial Stadium yeah. up in a locker room, and we'd sit there with him. Gosh. And you know, wait until the, you know he had the ice packs took effect and was going. Then we went out <laughs> till later on in the night. Yeah. You beat the Chargers. Yeah. Uh, actually, both yours, as I recall, wasn't it? The '64 and '65. Yeah. Uh, the hit. At the time, you know, we see that picture, that, that iconic hit of, of Mike Stratton on Keith Lincoln. Uh, at the time, when you're on the sidelines, did you did you sense that was a, a was game standing, changer? Yeah. I was standing there. Oh hell yeah! Let me tell you something. It just it turns everybody's head. I, when you heard it, um, they didn't. If they had the microphones on the sideline like they had have today, it would have been absolutely incredible. Because I'm I was within. 10 yards of it when he hit him. And uh, Lincoln had no chance because he was looking back at the ball with his arm up when Tobin rode through it to him. And Mike hit him, dipped and hit him right, broke every rib on this side. It was one of the greatest hits I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. Legal hits. Uh, it changed the whole complexion of the game. Not that the, the guys were afraid, it wasn't that. It's just that, you know, that we can't run over these guys. You know, we just won. Uh, I know the mentality because I was on the team that won in the 63 t three year. And these guys are saying, you know, we're the champs and we got these guys. Well, they didn't talk to the Buffalo Bills at that time. Mm -hmm. But I think the greatest for me was 65, which I was li still living in San Diego because I came from there. My wife and I went back, and in the 65 game, it was, uh, I don't know what the hell the score was, 17, 16, 16 nothing at the end of three. And the defense came off the field uh, in Dunaway, McDowell, Sestak, and Tippy Day all sat together. And I walked, I said, you know, we got to win this damn game. I didn't want to said, but we got to win this game. I said, we got to stop these guys. And in unison, they all said, they're not going to score. I went, that's it. It's over. It's over. We had a whole quarter to play against the best offensive football. If you remember that game, we were 17 point underdog. Mm -hmm. They never scored it, didn't even have a chance of scoring. Right. These guys, I mean, they just absolutely wiped them out. It was unbelievable. The greatest thing in that game was Billy Shaw got hurt on the opening kickoff in the wedge. George Flint weighed 230 pounds, played over Ernie Ladd the entire day, and kicked his ass up and down the field all day long. It was unbelievable. Did you talk to the guys afterwards, San Diego guys? I mean, here you I live there. Oh, so did you, uh, on the field, was there a conversation? You no, they, you know, I, I knew the guys. All of them, because I, I played in the championship games with these with those guys, the '63 games, and um, you know they just couldn't believe what happened to them, because they they just thought you know they're they're gonna in '64 they thought they were gonna come into Buffalo and, and beat the hell out of us, and that didn't happen, and they they knew we were a good football team, but you know they're at home, and they were good. My God, you had Lance Allworth and John Hadle and Paul Lowe. And, Keith Lincoln and uh, Faison was still with him. Faison, Lad. Uh, I Ron, mean, just Ron Mix. Just yeah, I mean, great players. But we did too. We did too. Do, do, do you reflect back? Uh, I mean, you've had such a stellar career, especially in the media. But uh, as you reflect back on the '64, '65 Bills, AFL champions, are they overshadowed <clears throat> by the, the the '90s run? No. Yeah. We won. Yeah, they did. didn't. That's right. <laughs> Tough said. Yeah. We are the only cha we are, are their only champions. That's right. I just found something out about 
three months ago. It's really kind of neat. For me, it's kind of neat. That in three dollars downstairs, I can get another Budweiser. <laughs> I'm the only guy in history that won three championship games in a row. Really? 63 Chargers, yeah. 64 five Bills. No one's ever done it. Wow. Ever. That's terrific. Isn't that neat? That is neat. And three more dollars, I can go down and get another <laughs> bud. <laughs> but it's fun. I mean, those days were fun. We didn't make a lot of money. It didn't matter. It really didn't matter. Yeah. Give me, give, give me a, a, a funny moment, a, a locker room moment, something which you reflect back and say, Greg, you're not going to believe this story. Well, you, you're, uh, we had a guy came to Buffalo by the name of uh, Remy Prudum. LSU. Not many people knew him. This guy was different. He, uh, he came into the locker room one day with an owl. <laughs> Scared the... I'm talking about grown men that weigh 300 pounds. Scared the crap out of everybody in the locker room. Had it in his locker. <laughs> Come on. How good is that? <laughs> and it didn't bother him and the owl sat there. Yeah. Scared the hell out of everybody. Yeah, there, are, there are a lot of things you can't talk about. You don't take things out of the locker room. We're not allowed. Yep. Not even today. And these guys allow everybody in it to get in the locker room. Yeah. We wouldn't do that. I mean, it, you're, you're, it's just your life. That's what it is. It's... The friendships, the loyalties you, that you build in a team. And we have too many guys today forget that they're on a team. Yeah. This is not about individuals. In the 60s, we, there were no individuals on our team. None. Honest to God, there were not. We went from 32 to 34, the same men that, that fought every day. Yeah. And it's not cliche and it's not stupid it's fact we were really that good because we were good together that's why we won Eddie Abramovsky oh please <laughs> Eddie Eddie uh, just no one worked harder no one loved the players more no, he's a guy that just, we had Dr. Godfrey, and he was a guy that would just say, at a young age, coming from Detroit, uh, has a job, professional team as a trainer, would say, this guy can't play. And he meant it. He was, you know, there were trainers, then there's the player's trainer. Then there's the guy that really was a trainer. He was a trainer. Mm -hmm. He really was. Did you enjoy punting? A lot, that I can. I have a scholarship fund at my high school in Ursuline, in Youngstown, Ohio, for a guy by the name of Nick Johnson. Is a black fellow that never really coached. He ran uh, the parks department in Youngstown years and years ago. He taught me how to punt. He used to stand behind me with a little board flat board with a little teeny nail on the end of it. And every time I hit the ball wrong, he hit me in the ass with that board. <laughs> After about a week, my ass was, my whole pants were, you know, you can only get one pair of football pants. Yeah, exactly. in those days, they were all blood. He taught me how to punt. He's the guy that enabled me to play professional football because I made it with the Chargers in 1960 as a punter, then played linebacker. But I made it as a punter, special teams guy. And did I like it? I loved it. Christ, I could. I was the best punter in the AFL. I was. And I, that's not bragging. The best punter I ever saw was Ray Guy. Mm -hmm. He's going in the Hall of Fame, thank God. Um, he just did things. But, and punting is an art. In, in a way, it's concentration. It's like hitting a golf ball. Mm -hmm. You got to, you know, control of what you're doing. I loved it because I had control. I just remember when I, there there were times in games that 
you know, we, we get the ball on, on the five-yard line or the four-yard line and are trying to get guys lined up. And I'd sit in the huddle and I said, okay, you got him. There, there. Just block inside out. He said, the clock's running out. We're going to be penalized. What are you, what are you going to penalize this? A yard? <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Just settle down. Stop. Yeah, yeah. Walk up to the line of scrimmage and point out the guy you're going to block. It was that simple. I only had two blocked in my entire career in 11 years. Wow. One was a, was a, not his fault. It was a bad snap by the guy standing downstairs, L.B. Miller. We're in Oakland. It's a clump of grass, a clump of mud, and he hit it on the way back, the ball. And then one in San Diego. Against San Diego. No, when I was with San Diego, pardon me. The only two times I ever had a punt block in my life. But I learned how to get the ball away. A guy taught me something years ago, how to, how to punt. And it's, it, that's why I'm standing or sitting here. Am I sitting or standing? Sitting here because of a guy by the name of Nick Johnson. That's the guy. He taught me just, you know, just relax and hit it. Sort of like your media career. You did relax and you did hit it. You were funny. You were articulate. You were hey, I'm funny. still doing it. It's, it's, it's terrific. This will be my 44th year. I'm doing the Southern Conference again. Really? No one in history has ever done it for that long. Yeah. I got a lot of history crap going on. Yeah. And $3 I can get a Budweiser. Are there a few plays that you get a look at and you'd say, I don't believe I just saw that. I mean, I know you've said it. Sometimes you say it and you say, that's, that's an amazing call that you made or amazing something you saw, you know, whether it was college or professional football. Do you have one or two or three that say, you can't believe this one? There are so many. It, re it really is. Uh, you know, when you s see guys es it ex escape from three or four guys, you wonder how the hell he did it. The shot that, that uh, Mike Stratton did on Lincoln was not vicious. It was just, and they came back what was two, last year, a year before, mm -hmm. when Keith, we brought Keith Lincoln back, and they had not seen each other since. Really? It was kind of neat. It's something that, you know, it's just um, amazing. I'll tell you something, 1961 with the Chargers, uh, I was a starting linebacker uh, on the weak side, <clears throat> and we... We still hold the record in the National Football League. It'll never be broken, can't be, because we only did it in 14 games, and they now play 16. Still won't be broken with 16 games. We have 49 interceptions in one year. Wow. 1961 Chargers. I had five. Think about it. In 14 games, we had 49 interceptions. They talk about, the, and we played man to man. Very little zone, mostly man to man. Was, we never even thought about it. Yeah. No one brings it up. Now, if that's something you want to remember, yeah, I do. That I remember. Yeah. Well, rightfully so, my guy. Uh, but um, I remember when I was putting against the Jets. Something you see, you'll never forget. Two things happened, two times. One was with the Chargers, and I was a linebacker, and Chuck Allen was their middle linebacker. He's now, he's still, I think, with the Seattle Seahawks as a scout and thing. But Chuck got hit, and I was pursuing across the field, and he broke his leg, and his leg was sticking through the sock, the blue sock. I got, I. He's laying on the field, and I, I called for the doctor, went to the sidelines, and Sid Gilman said, what's the matter with Alan? I said, just a second. Pardon me. I don't know if I can say I just went over, and I threw up, and I came back and said, his leg's broken. Yeah. That, when I was punting against the Jets in New York, and Dr. Martin was here. Not Martin, Dr. Godfrey. And Jack Spikes was a, was a blocking back in front of me. And he got hit in the throat, and he was swallowing his tongue. He was going to die. Dr. Godfrey ran out from the field, put his hand down his throat, and pulled his tongue out. His, I mean, it was blood. Yeah. Those are things that you remember. You may not like it, but it's part of the game. And these things happen. You remember those things. The victories, yeah, they, they just, they're all, you know, 
afterwards it's it's there. But that's what you fight for. Right. Just to win. Those are easy. You're in the media booths. Are there, are there one or two guys that you love to work with? Just as the. Oh man, God, I've, I've worked with everybody. Uh, Marv Albert, I, I respected more than anyone. Uh, Jay Randolph was the first that I worked with, but Marv Albert uh, was special. God, he was good, and he is good. He still is. Um, just um, a guy that perfection with a great sense of humor. It's one of the reasons they paired us up. And he said, uh, Dick Ebersole said, you know, I want you to go work with Marv Albert. And I'm thinking, way, I mean, he's too technical about things. Got a great sense of humor. Yeah. Great, great sense of humor. Hi. Obviously, so do you. Uh, do, do, prep, prepping for a game, I mean, it just seems to come so spontaneous for you. I mean, you just, you see it, you react. Uh, and I, I know you... But the prep app for that, do you, do you spend a lot of time on? Yeah. Uh, I have a, a woman in, in uh, Michigan that does the boards, mm -hmm. 3D boards. And she's phonetically, everything is out so you don't make a mistake in someone's name. That's something you cannot do. And then you just put all your boards together and put your pertinent information on there. But once the game starts, I don't look, really look at the board. You got to remember, and you can't screw up somebody's name. Mm -hmm. You really can't. And I would rather say someone made a great play than someone made a shitty play. Yeah. Pardon me, but yeah. it's true. Yeah. Because you know he's going to get ripped in the film room when the coaches look at it. So he already knows that he made a mistake. But I would rather talk about a guy that made a great play or a good play than someone that didn't. Um, I just think that that to me is important, uh, and, and players bust their humps to get it on television to do a game. And playing the sport, I don't think we have the right to rip them. Right. I really don't. Now, if if something he does is flagrant, you know, uh, I remember doing a Kansas City Chiefs preseasons, and we had a guy that guy was beaten by. 10 yards, the guy's in the end zone and dropped the ball. I will never tell you names. And he's out there celebrating the defensive back. I said, do me a favor, show me this play one more time. I want to show how this guy got beat. And now you're celebrating because this guy dropped the ball? Yeah. You just got cut yeah. and you don't know it, <laughs> or you should be. But, you know, it's, as long as people understand it's a game, there's too much money involved in it now. That, that, that's the scary part. But, you know, there are times when you're on it, uh, all the time when you're on a team, when you're in a team, and that's why it's called a team, and you re represent a town like Buffalo or wherever, you got to understand where the hell you are and what you're doing. There is no excuses. Involved in one of the most spectacular plays in Bill's history in the 1965 AFL championship game against the Chargers, Butch Bird took a John Hadle punt and with outstanding blocking took it 74 yards for a touchdown. The last two blocks were by McGuire, crushing two Chargers. John Hadle and Dave Kosurek. Dave Kosurek, who is, he is now passed away, uh, we started with the Chargers in 1960 together in Los Angeles. He's the godfather to my uh, middle daughter. Um, yeah. Set that up. I mean, what, what happened? <clears throat> I'm, in, I'm in the right place at the right time. Uh, I'm on the punt return team. Uh, Butch Bird caught the ball. And he's coming up field. And I don't even know he's behind me because I'm looking the block. Because you can hear the crowd. You know that it isn't over with yet. Yeah. And John Hadle was the punter, Dave Kosurek was the outback, and they were both together. And I hit either Dave into, into John or John into Dave, and they both went down. 
I was going full speed this way and they were kind of catching. And all I can hear was one of them on the ground, you son of a bitch. <laughs> and we laid there and laughed. We did. All three of us laid there and laughed. Because it was a touchdown and it was, you know, part of the game. It wasn't anything vicious. It was just I happened to be in the right place at the right time, and they happened to be lined up. <laughs> if I was in a bowling alley, I'd have got 10. <laughs> you were talking about being in uh, three championships. Uh, it also, you, uh, you played in six of the 10 AFL championship games. Yeah. Three with the Chargers, three with the Bills, and they're winning three AFL championship rings in... You were the league's all-time punter in punts and yardage. Yeah, isn't that cute? It's wonderful. Three more bucks, I can get another buck. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, it was, you know, I, I happened to be on the right teams. My God, I, you know, I was on the Chargers when they were winning, and I was on the Bills when they were winning. It was, I was, in the, again, in the right place at the right time with some really good athletes, man. I mean, you know, I, you talk about Hall of Fame guys, uh, Ron Mix, Billy Shaw, uh, Lance Allworth, uh, just, I happen to be on teams around really good people that helped me. My father, my mother taught me how to be a good person, but really helped me to continue to be a good person, because mm -hmm. they all were. Uh, we didn't have any bad guys. We didn't have any guys. When you got in trouble, you were responsible. We wouldn't tolerate it as a team. Now everybody tolerates it. And it's sad. It really is. And it really pisses me off. Because you don't have the right. You just don't have the right to do stuff that's bad for yourself, your family, but your team. And there's no excuse for it. I just don't think there is. This has been great. I really appreciate your time, and uh, we'll make sure you get another bud here. That's it. Now, see, now we're talking. <laughs> <Good show down. laughs> Thank you very much.